One of the best ways to learn something I've found is to learn from somebody who's accomplished exactly what I'm trying to accomplish. So in this episode, when I say Zach Booth went from washing windows to making millions annually wholesaling real estate, if you're wanting to quit your job and start a new business so that you can live life on your own terms, this episode will help teach you how to scale a business just like Zach did. Even if you don't have a lot of real estate knowledge, we're here to break things down for you so that you can get started. If you guys have listened to any previous episodes and you found any value from the podcast, please leave us a review. It helps us make more content to help you get financial freedom. The Deal Machine REI Podcast. Everything you need to know to get started in real estate investing. All right, so here with us, we've got Zach Booth. Zach, you've been doing a million dollars per year in revenue from wholesaling real estate. And I did the math. You said that you do about $40,000 average on a deal. So that means you're doing about 25 deals per year. And I'm just curious. Is That's somebody... our average this year. Our average okay. is up. Last year was like 30. So I think we did somewhere in the range of 40 to 35 deals last year. And we barely, we barely broke a million last year. So, but we're already like almost to that million this year. Wow. And it's only halfway through the year. Yeah, we're doing, we're doing really good. Our goal is 2 million this year. So we're, what do you think is well. the difference between 2022 and 2023 for you? Uh, a handful of things. We really ramped up Florida. We added um, virtual land, uh, land flipping. Uh, we started monetizing our retail leads. Like in the last month and a half, we've signed six listings just off of what, yeah, that's, that's a lot of money. Just one of them is a million dollar listing. Um, so combination of all those things, trailers and trailer parks, we added that as well. So a lot of just extra income. So we went from one sales rep to where we have three sales reps now and uh, two real estate agents. How did you know, congratulations, first of all, on doing what seems like to be a doubling of your business? this year. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. The best part is I haven't really had to do much more. It was just the recruitment and the relationships, which is makes it even more fun. Right? Yeah, I definitely want to hear about that. Um, what do you mean the recruitment and the relationships? Are you talking about your team? Yeah, yep, my team. Yep. Gotcha. How many team members do you have running this operation? So it started with just, um, you know, last to do a million a year, it was me, two cold callers in the Philippines, um, an acquisition guy and, um, Miguel, who you've met a bunch. He's our, my, my right hand, my integrator. And that was it. And, um, it was awesome. And, you know, we've expanded, um, to, to be able to, to shoot for that $2 million goal. Uh, I think the infrastructure I have um, now, the team members I have, I think the following year we we could comfortably hit three million. We have enough team and staff to handle more leads and more, you know, marketing to to do more deals. I think we could do three million the next year. Um, but we have uh, now we have our real estate agent slash partner for our Florida market, uh, Justin. I got Hayden, uh, who is my partner here in Utah. Uh, who's also the sales manager. So that's kind of the leadership team for the two markets. Here in Utah, we have Miguel, who does all my systems still. He has someone underneath him that does all our driving here in Utah and helps with some of the in-house stuff. Uh, he's got an assistant, an assistant, a VA assistant, uh, who helps him. We have a person that comes to our office here in Utah who does all of our virtual negotiations in Florida for land. Uh, we have the two cold callers in the Philippines still is all... Um, and then we have an acquisition manager in Florida and that's it. That's our team. Got it. That's crazy. So you're, how did you decide on Florida and how did you know it was the right time to expand? Because I hear sometimes people expand and they get this shiny object syndrome and they're mm. focused on a lot of things at once and it doesn't go as well as yours has gone. Yeah. Um, I, I've actually had a couple road bumps trying to do it. Um, the, the main issue is when you're building a virtual team, a lot of times it's really hard to build culture and buy-in, right? So we'd hire some good people. And, and the reason I picked Florida is I did the 40-day challenge that some people may know. It's where I took a thousand bucks, flew across the country, and the goal is to make 
at least the average American income in 40 days with that thousand bucks using Dill Machine and doing driving for dollars. And on that challenge, it's free for people to watch if they want to watch it on my YouTube channel. But, um, you know, while I was there, I had set up the cash buyers lists and all those things and found someone that could take over all those leftover leads that needed follow up and just kind of take things where I left them. And we made a bunch of money that year, actually, after the challenge um, from leads that I had created um, and new leads as well. And he didn't work out. He kind of just quit working. And then we had another person and it didn't work out. We had another person and it didn't work out. And it was a little bit harder to recruit talent and build culture and, and buy in where they weren't coming to my office and that kind of stuff. So um, we started doing virtual land and found a real estate agent who was an amazing guy. And I went down there for the family mastermind actually in, in March. And, um, you know, so we've only really been doing wholesaling again in, in Florida since March. It's now July. But I met him and we were talking about doing more land stuff and how to get creative and even sell land on seller finance. And and he asked me about the, the wholesaling and the driving for dollar system. He knows what I do and who I am. And, and um, I ended up getting stuck there. We had some really bad storms in Utah and I ended up staying in his house with his family and really got to know who he was. And I realized what a visionary he was and how he knew everybody and how he was exactly the missing piece that I needed to recruit and, and bring people on. So whether it was luck or, you know, knew what I was looking for, you know, I'm blessed to have a great team members now that, that are, that it's allowed me to, to build this business. You know, it's kind of crazy guys. Um, you know, I kind of late to this podcast, I had to go run earnest money. So I got into this business originally because I wanted to buy rentals. I wanted passive income, all this stuff. And it's it's funny because I remember thinking one day I'll have a business that I can get cash by wholesaling, but then I have a business that sources discounted deals. So I can cherry pick my best ones. I build build net worth and passive income. So my acquisition manager locks up a deal. He said, that Zach, this one fits your criteria for a rental. I think you should buy it. So I went and saw it today. We're under contract. I went and saw it and I said, yeah, I want it. We're getting it for $255,000 fixed up. It's worth 430000 and I'm like, fantastic. Yeah, I want it. He's like, great. That's perfect. How much uh, private money do you need? Because he has our private money lenders that we've all set up. So he's like, okay, I'll make the call for you. How much do you want? He's like, I'd want $300,000. He calls me. He's like, okay, like 30 minutes later. He's like, okay, it's all set up. Just run $3,000 earn this money to the title company. I have 300000 lined up for you. Just go to the title company next week and close. Jeez, it's like- to get that earnest money there before they closed. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, that's why I was running around this evening. But it's like, how crazy is that? Yeah. I was washing windows seven years ago, and now I have this amazing team that's like, "Hey, here's your rental. Okay, I'll line up your money. Just go close." Like, it's just, it's sometimes I, I, it's like it's not even real. You know, it's it's a it's a huge blessing. And and Dill Machine, right? Your guys' company has a, a huge part in. And having that be a reality because I didn't have a lot of marketing money. I didn't have a way to make make wholesale deals happen by buying lists and competing with all these guys that had tens of thousands of dollars a week to spend to find these discounted deals. I had to I had to earn my success and and Deal Machine was that opportunity. So you guys have a huge part in that. It's, it's pretty awesome. Well, thanks for saying that, Zach. I'm certainly thankful that we get to be a part of that. And it's no big deal. You had to go get that earnest money. On this podcast, we only interview people who are doing the business. And sometimes that happens. It's a great story to share as well. Why don't you tell me a little bit about when you started? Because yeah. I know that you said you didn't have a lot of money. And I know that you said that you did have a business before. So I'm curious about how those two things could both be true. Yeah, there's a lot of people that own businesses that don't make anything, guys. <laughs> I was one of them. So um, I had a window cleaning business. So I was 17 years old, and I was already sick of working for other people. My senior year in high school, I was writing my own work release hours and got my business license, licensed, insured, and bonded to get the larger contracts on my 18th birthday. That's what I did for my birthday. You know, I've always been really into entrepreneurship. I've always had a desire to take care of myself and you know, I dreamed big, but fell on my face for a lot of years. And I built a window cleaning business for a decade. Um, from the outside looking in, I was successful. You know, I had three trucks and I had up to 13 employees. I had a, a, 
a YouTube channel. And I didn't even mean to like, I keep creating these things. I don't mean to the things that I don't mean to go like do well, they do well. So I, I created like these tutorial videos on how to clean windows for my employees. Cause I had so much turnover. I was like, this is how you correctly clean a window. This is how you can make a lot of money window cleaning by cleaning it this way. And I ended up on the history channel because of it. Oh, like wow. I have one what? of my, yeah, one of my videos went viral. I have like 20 million views on it. Um, every once in a while, someone finds me like, wait, you're the window cleaning guy. <laughs> no way. Nice. Yeah. So, you know, from the outside looking in, I was successful, but I, the bigger I got, the less I made. It was like, I, you know, I was like hitting those diminishing returns. I didn't really know how to run a business. Nobody aspired to be a window cleaner, which was hard to right? I, all my employees hated me and they just wanted a paycheck and I hated them because they just wanted more and to do less. And it was, really, it was a really hard space and it was a really frustrating time. I ended up uh, bringing on a business partner that didn't do so well. And, um, uh, you know, I remember fighting over my wife all the time over $20 here, $20 there. Like it was, it sucked. It was a painful, painful place to be after working 70, 80 hour work weeks for 10 years in a row, you know, and only, only making maybe 40 to $60,000 a year. I worked so I could get up and go to work. You know, it's horrible. So you had 13 employees, you made not much and you actually have less employees now and you make a lot more. <laughs> and I love my employees. I, I die for each one. of them. What was I the transition them. from the window washing to the like was it just your first deal tell us how you got that very first deal and how you knew that okay this is the route that we're going now um well i had read rich dad poor dad when i was 14 years old um i remember my i grew up my dad had me work full time since i was 11 in the summer uh we mowed lawns and i remember you know we were mowing up above the Capitol here in salt lake and um you know, where all the jazz live and, you know, Larry H. Miller you know, owned the jazz. I saw him one time in his, in his car and I was like, Oh my gosh, you know? And, um, anyways, I remember asking my dad when I was 14, I was like, dude, why are they rich? Why are you know, they have kids. Why aren't they mowing the lawn? You know, like, why, you know, why am I, you know, why am I mowing someone else's lawn? No one's mowing our lawn. I mow our lawn. You know, I was, I kept asking my dad cause he'd work a full-time job and then we'd go after school with him to mow lawns. And we had a great childhood, you know, we camped, we went hunting, we had a great time, but we worked our butts off. And I remember when I was 15, I was in charge of making sure 50 lawns were taken care of. Right. And, and I remember thinking like, why is this? And so my dad's like, I don't know, ask my rich friend. Uh, his name's Clint Sherman, owns a bunch of rentals. And he gave me that book as a gift. And so that was the first time that I started like thinking differently. Like there's got to be a different way. It's what pushed me into entrepreneurship at 17, like soon as I could. Um, and my dad wouldn't even co-sign a loan for a truck. So at 17, I had saved up enough cash to buy a truck cash. And, you know, I was working 80 hour work weeks, my junior year summer to make that happen. And, um, anyways, uh, I was really burnt out. You know, the partnership started going bad. I was starting to make even less money because of the partnership issue. My partner was responsible for collecting on our residual accounts and he wasn't an average job was like 150 bucks. We had almost $25,000 in accounts receivable cause he wasn't doing his damn job. So, you know, my family was going hungry cause he wasn't doing his job and I was just, just frustrated. And so I started looking for something, started listening to podcasts, started really re listening to books and reading books. And while I was out on the job site, sweating and freezing to death, you know, Utah gets down to, eight degrees and as hot as a hundred degrees. And so it was just, it was never comfortable. And, um, I had heard about this creative stuff of wholesaling and I thought BS, there's no way. And, uh, that people would give their house at a discount. And I ended up washing windows for a super wealthy gentleman that gave me two of his properties, seller finance, turned around and sold them the next year for over a hundred grand. And I was like, Holy crap, it, it, it works. It's real. It exists. And I believe it was, I believe it wouldn't have happened if I hadn't been listening to books and podcasts and thinking about it and, and hoping that it existed. Um, but I also believe, I also believe there's more to life than just life and death. I don't really know what that is. Um, right. But I Probably believe there's some kind hunting. of, 
<laughs> there's a lot of hunting that yes and working i think working's good i think growing as people yeah. is good but I, but i also i also believe that there's 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 a god right i do sure. and and who that is and how that is i'm not really sure yet but i believe that there's a purpose to it and there's a plan or at least i hope there is we'll say that i hope that there is and and it's one of those moments in my life that that made such a huge impact for me and so many other people that I can't help but think that there was a bigger purpose behind it all. Right. Because it gave me this, this permission. It gave me this hope. Um, even before I had sold them, I knew what I had, right. I got into wholesaling before I even sold that property. So when I went into wholesaling, I had no money. I ended up selling those properties so I could really ramp things up and I bought them as rentals. And, um, you know, cause he's like, can you put 10% down, which was like, or 20% down, which was a hundred grand. I was like, uh, no, <laughs> you know, he's like, how much could you put down? It's like two grand. He's like, okay. <laughs> wow. And yeah. So it was just, it was a life changing experience, but reading books, listening to podcasts, you know, really thinking, oh, that's too good to be true. No one will sell their house at a discount. And if they will, you're taking advantage of them. But this dude was super wealthy. His name's Stan Nielsen, super wealthy, giant home, retired, had tons. He had two multi-million dollar developments going on. He was an investor, had a bunch of rentals. There were just two he didn't want to deal with. And everything that people had said it was, it was happening to me. And it was like, wow, this is a deal of a lifetime. And people are saying there's a way to do it you know, every day even. And, and that's when I pulled the trigger and hired a coach and, and went for it. I walked away. It was March, March 2nd. It was my birthday. I sat down with my business partner. I bought him lunch and I said, Hey, I quit. <laughs> I quit. Mm -hmm. And he said, you're crazy. Wholesaling you is a lunch. scam. Yeah. Yeah. I said, wholesaling is a scam. You're not going to be successful, blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay, no worries. I'll be fine. I don't want to wash windows anymore. Um, I didn't even give him a two weeks notice. And I said, if there's profits, great. If there's not great, well, I'm done. And, uh, I haven't washed, well, I, I washed my windows here once. It was pretty fun. <laughs> One time. I hope you use the right technique. So I know that when you started, you didn't have a lot of money because a lot of your money was going out to pay all the 13 employees. And I was also curious though, you have money now yet you've still <laughs> stayed true. I think finding a lot of your deals with driving for dollars still, right? Or do you find yeah. all of them driving for dollars? I don't find all of them. Um, I, I bet we'll do a little over half, which is a lot of driving for dollars, right? It is definitely our core business. It's still to this day, our highest profitable thing. So the profits that I pay myself, I would say probably 60 to 70% of them are driving for dollars of the profits that I put in my pocket. And if you don't yeah. know what driving for dollars is, you drive around, look for rundown homes, and then you look up who owns it and send them a letter or a call asking if they want to sell their house. And if they say, yeah, then you take them through your process, right? Yeah. It's pretty easy. Isn't it? Isn't it stupid? It's like, Oh, that's all it is. But it's fun and it's repeatable. That's what's that's what's awesome about it is that it's a repeatable process. It's once you know it, and we say this all the time, it's proof of concept. Once you have the idea of, okay, that's how it works. And that's all it took for me was I just needed to see the process work. I just had to get a house under contract. I had to find a buyer and I had to close. I had to get that check. And then it was like, oh my gosh, this is, I'm going to go and do that again. And then it becomes you know, 400 deals later. And it's still, to me, it's still a really fun business. I thoroughly enjoy it. It's something that brings excitement to the day and you get to see in a town, our size, you get to see impact. Like you, after 400 houses is a big, that's a big number of houses in a population of 75,000. So you start to see impact of what you're doing and that becomes even more fun, but it's not a challenging you don't need four years of college to do this. You just need a little bit of willpower and a little bit of information and go. So Zach, you actually taught me this. A lot of people, including myself, they feel funny when they walk up to the door to ask if they want to sell their house. But you told me along the lines of, you're not there to convince them. You just ask them quickly if they want window cleaning or if they want to sell their house and if they say no you get out of there as fast as possible right you're not trying to convince them of anything 
Yeah. I built uh, my window cleaning business the year I, the year I walked away from it. We were, uh, we had done just, just over or just under, I think it was, it was right at half a million. So a half a million of window cleaning sales, one job is an average of about 150 bucks. So do the math. I washed a lot of windows and I built pretty much all of it from door to door sales myself. So I'd wash windows till 5 p.m. and then I'd door knock till 9 p.m. I was not afraid of hard work and uh, I did that for a lot of years. And um, I remember I'd knock on doors and I'd say, I'm doing bids for window cleaning. Do you want a bid for window cleaning? Like that blunt to the point. didn't say my name, nothing. And if they said no, I said, do you want a card for the future? If they said no, I'd turn around and run. I just turn around and run <laughs> because it was efficient. It was efficient. It was just, efficient. You know, time you to, to go to the, the next, next house. one. Yes. Yeah. Move yeah. on. Yeah. I sold, dude, I sold so many stink of window cleaning and, and I've learned that a lot of people, you know, they get this concept or this idea that you have to be like this smooth talking, you know, convince people, you know, uh, Tommy boy reference. You know, you, you have to be able to sell a catch up popsicle to a woman in white gloves. Right. And that's not, that's not it at all. Right. You're missing the point. We're trying to find someone that already wants a pawn shop for their house. Our job's to find those people and say, yeah, that's what we do. Um, but there's other guys that can do that as well. So if you want to work with someone that can offer you speed and convenience, that's what I do, but you have other options as well. Is it okay if we talk and see if I'm the one you want to work with, or maybe you'll want to find someone else to work with. That's it. And then you go to work and you solve their problems and you get paid to do it. And I've learned that people that need a pawn shop for their house, right? They, they don't take care of it. I'm going to show you pictures of my, my rental. It was disgusting. You know, like open up your podcast app right now and leave us a review and let us know what you thought of this episode. It means so much because the reviews help us get in front of more people and the more people we can get in front of, the more we can help them achieve financial freedom. And we also get more energy to put more content out like this to help you. So by leaving us a review, it will give you more content to come to help you along in your journey. Thank you so much. She hasn't had the water on in a month. They've been using the toilets, right? Oh, no. They've been using the, the toilets smell. without the water on? Oh, oh the toilets, no. the smell of the house, no AC going in there. It was like It's like 100 degrees outside right now. Dude, I walked in there. She's got cats in the basement. It's like, oh, I'm so glad I don't have to demo this property. Uh, <laughs> to the trash out. So it's, you know, it's, it's crazy. Their lawn was dead and all the yards next to it were all super nice. Like it was just a, just a junk or two major hoarding situation. And it was complete obvious, you know? And so what I found is people that need to sell for speed and convenience, they're tired landlords, there's an inheritance situation, there might be structural or, or rehab stuff they can't deal with. Even if they sold it, they, they couldn't sell it the traditional way for the most part because the banks won't finance on that for primary residents. And so they really do need some kind of a cash offer. Um, and, you know, if you step in and say, hey, I understand that you want a cash offer, you know, what's going to keep you from selling your house today? And then you're going to uncover all their problems. It needs to go through probate or transfer ownership because of, you know, someone passed away or, or it's got liens from the city from all the code violations. They've been charging me $250 a day for 10 years, you know? So there's like $150,000 in liens from code violations and you have to go negotiate those down to a couple thousand bucks and you got to go do all these things to help those people. And if you say, well, I could buy it and take care of all of that for you, would you be willing to work with me? You know? And when you can do that, it's, it's crazy how much money you make. It's, it's stupid. Got it. So I'm curious, you've had a lot of success. Have you had any big failures in real estate investing? Mm, I wouldn't say failures because, because failures are, I think the only true failure is when people stop, when people give up on something, when they give up on their dream. I think that's the only real failure that ever exists is when people give up on themselves. Um, have I lost money? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, it's like, it's like saying if you've ever, um, if you've ever rode a, or if, if someone tells me they've never crashed a bike, I'll say, well, you've never ridden one. Right. 
Um, last year I lost, I did a flip. Like, it's funny. I could have, whole, it would have been my biggest wholesale fee ever. I could have wholesaled this house as a million dollar house in sugar house in Utah in a high end area, right by the university of Utah on 13th South. And <clears throat> I'm like, Oh man, this one's going to make me so much money. I had a cash offer to sign the contract for $135,000. And I was like, sweet, you know, like let's flip it. And I ended up losing almost ninety thousand dollars on that. Wait, deal. oh, because you did the flip strategy? Because I because I, I bought it. it. Yeah, yeah I took the debt and flipped it, and I lost ninety grand. Contractor stole from me. Contractor mm. um, put a wrongful notice of interest on it. Um, got in a lawsuit so, over it with him. It's just everything that could go wrong went wrong. Went wrong. Went wrong. Yeah, it sounds like it. So flipping, yeah. you can make more money sometimes, but it has a lot of risks. And, and I and I don't know that you can make more money. You really don't think so. Mm -mm. Okay. And the reason for that is it takes it takes more team members. It takes more infrastructure. Wholesaling is a sales and marketing business. It takes almost no staff. It's a lot. It's a lot easier to control all the factors, right? That make you money. You send. You go out and drive and add your thousand properties a week. You send your postcards and you send your text messages. You work the leads that come in and you get paid to do so, right? Where we can go throw in flipping, you got to source your own flips, whether you buy from a wholesaler or whatever, fine. You buy from a wholesaler. There's a small profit margin. There's a lot of factors you can't see when you walk a property, you know, oh, it has cast iron tubes that are broken. We got to, you know, put in a new sewer line. Well, there goes 10 grand, right? Oh, it's got termites. Well, it goes 30, 40 grand, right? Like, it's it's so hard to guarantee profits flipping um you know i mean like i look at my good buddy matt i love to death i hunt with him and he's a major flipper and i when when interest rates changed i think he had 50 properties in an in his inventory that he was flipping one of the he's a rock star i mean he's he's loaded right way more than me and uh but it has like how much are you gonna lose on your inventory that you're you're moving right now Right, because prices changed on him. He's like, oh, a couple million. I go, oh. you know. Yeah. Well, with wholesaling, yeah. you do spend money marketing, but you don't have the risk of the money tied up in the deal, right? So you don't have the risk of the contractor stealing from you either. Yeah, but it's also quicker to get your money back, right? So I can I can go and find an ugly house. For example, the forty day challenge, right? I made ninety three thousand cash in that in that time period. I did the work in that time period. A couple of them cashed out after that time period, but the work was done um, because all you're doing is pushing the paper. You come to an agreement with the seller, you come to an agreement with the buyer and you get paid. It's, right. it's, it's so much faster, faster. so it's much simpler. Process. Time frame's not an issue. And then the other thing too is with my driving for dollars marketing, I get a, a 10x return on my marketing. What that means is if I put a dollar into my marketing, I get 10 back. Okay. So, so, so imagine like, imagine you go to like Vegas and you sit down in a slot machine and you put in a thousand bucks and $10,000 comes out. I mean, that'd be like, amazing. I would use that machine all day long. <laughs> yeah. You would never get up. You just keep putting a thousand and 10,000 come out, put a thousand, 10,000 comes out. You're like, Oh, let's put 10,000. You put 10,000 and a hundred thousand comes out. That's what, driving for dollars is doing for me like it's 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 there's there's some nuances and there's things that i've done to make it that profitable but but the coolest part about all of this is i put together a system that i put in a hundred dollars and a and a thousand comes out well that leaves me enough money to hire the most skilled most amazing human beings that i love and would hang out with them regardless if i was paying them or not Right. And they do all of the legwork and the running and they say, Zach, you know, everything's ready to go. Just take the money over. I've even lined up your private money. Just go sign, you know, to acquire that kind of talent, you have to pay them well. And I still pull a huge profit margin, 30, 40%. And I don't have to do any of the cold calling or any of the driving or any of the negotiations. And I only went and saw that property because I want to keep it for my own portfolio. Right. That's amazing. Right, like talk to me yeah. about some of the hey, other you changes never know. that you've had. It might. It's possible. <laughs> no, we, we we definitely have like 
the way we handle our money and that kind of stuff now, right? We had to we had to become stewards of this money because you you know you hear people that win the lottery and they lose it all, right? And right. they file bankruptcy. They're worse yeah. off because of it. Right. So Both I've I've players. had yeah yeah exactly so so i've i've definitely spent a lot of money on educating myself and understanding how to be a steward of this money and that kind of stuff we've set up boundaries and how we manage our money and that kind of stuff but we definitely get spoiled much much more than we ever do did before you know we bought our dream home last year and um it's nothing crazy but it's magnificent in comparison to anything that we had ever had before and it was kind of funny because I came home from work two days ago, actually. Here's a funny story. My wife's name's Karen, by the way. I might offend some Karens here, but <laughs> so my wife's name's Karen. And, and I came home. She's like, hey, you know, my friend Johnny that we met in Rome, uh, we're going to go to New York in a couple weeks. Is that OK? And I'm like, you sound like a Karen. <laughs> I was like, listen to that sentence. It's like, my friend I met in Rome, we're going to New York in two weeks. And it made me laugh because it's like, if. I could, you know, go back in time, you know, myself back in time and look in the future and see how, how, how much I get to spoil my wife and the vacations that we get to do and the freedoms that we have today because of it. Like, I wouldn't believe it. Right. And so the, the lifestyle is definitely, it's definitely, definitely more than I ever imagined that I'd ever have. Um, it, it, and it means so much because it's not just like the stuff. But it's also the memories. It's also the peace of mind and the comfort. It's also, um, it's also allowing my wife to do and be who she wants to be. And same for me. You know, like I love entrepreneurship. I love helping people get into entrepreneurship. I love real estate. Um, and for me, I get to wake up and do whatever I want to do, and it's it's the greatest thing ever. It's 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 amazing. Well, speaking of what you want to do, I know that you hunt a lot because I've been to your office and I've seen a lot of taxidermy. So tell us about why you like hunting so much. Yeah. So I actually don't talk about it a lot. It's funny you ask. Um, I don't talk about it because it's kind of a taboo. A lot of people don't understand it in the way that I do, right? I was raised around it. I was raised out here in the West in Utah and my whole life and still to this day, like we're eating salmon that I caught in Alaska last week, right? Um, I fill my freezer every year with elk. Um Man, elk's my favorite. I'm hunting moose next year in Canada with my dad. It's been his dream. He's retiring next year. He's been in the same job since he's 19, uh, 63 next year. And we're going on a moose hunt. He's always wanted to hunt moose. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I, today we were eating Audad jerky in the office. This is Audad is a crazy animal in Texas that I hunted, uh, with Matt, my friend I mentioned a couple months ago. Um, you know, to me, hunting is a, is, it's a lot of things. It's obviously what I eat. Um, I like eating it. I, it's way better for you. I do blood work every six months. I'm very, I work out almost every single day. I'm very conscious of my health. Um, you know, my blood panels are extremely healthy. Um, so there's the benefits there, but there's more to it. There's understanding being connected to life, being connected to death, being connected to where my food comes from, understanding the animals the way I do, the camaraderie with friends and family, the the peace that comes of being in the wilderness and hiking miles and miles all by yourself. And, um, you know, I, I hunt all over from Alaska to hunted in Hawaii last year to Texas. And I hunted an alligator in Florida this spring. Um, you know, we're, we're actually going to do a, uh, uh, a glass conference table with a nine and a half foot full size alligator underneath it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so it's, 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 to me, it's, it's, it's a lot of things, but I, but I love it. I love the challenge of it, the experience of it. Um, does hunting ever relate to real estate? Is there any, any correlations between the two? Cause I always say the thrill of the hunt, like that's what I love about real estate is it's the thrill of a hunt. So what is the thrill of a hunt? Yeah. Well, the thrill of the hunt is to me, it's, you know, if you really want to hunt the way I do, I, I don't really pay guides. Like there's, there's these hunts where you can go to like Africa and these safaris where they're literally high fence hunts and you sit in a blind and they put feet out and they give you a binder 
full of all the animals and the and what the names are and a picture of them so you know and the price tag and you shoot the animal when it comes to the bait and then the guides go get it and clean it and then you go drink wine and have steak at night and it's like i have zero interest i think that's the dumbest thing ever because it takes rid of what you said the, the experience the thrill and understanding the way i hunt is i research an animal where are they found in the world what is the regulations, right? Because there's conservation behind this and all the funds and stuff actually go into the protection of those animals. Kind of funny the people killing the animals or protecting the animals, right? But that's where the money comes from. Follow the money and that's what's what's keeping it there. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, if you, if you do the research and find out where the animal is, how can you legally get tags, what it's going to take to get there, what equipment that I need, and then going out and even just finding one a lot of the times is just like the first time I, I've hunted bear, bears for years. It took me five years to freaking find one. It took me five years to find one, like consistently. So when you got it, it meant that much more. Yeah, yeah. When I saw one, when I saw one, my adrenaline rush was so insane. Just seeing one um, was insane. And so, uh, yeah, I guess the way we do real estate, we're roaming around looking for those those ugly houses and, and then we're calling and we're grinding and we're, you know, hiking miles and miles to, to do. And then when you get that first phone call, tell me I'm wrong. You have the same feeling, the same nerves that you would get. And I don't know, I'm not a hunter, but I can only relate it to that. Like I remember that first, first phone call. I was just like, Oh my gosh, it's actually a call from a postcard. You know, now it's really happening. Now I got to do this. Yeah, Same thing I love that. Hunting. It's so true. There's the bear. So true. Yeah. yeah. Love it. It's so cool to hear you talk about hunting. We've talked briefly about it, but I haven't heard you describe it quite like that. And truly hearing from somebody that's passionate about something is always a treat. So I'm really excited to hear that you're enjoying hunting so much. Um, and it sounds like real estate's maybe freed up some of your time to be able to do more of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like I had... So before, when I was washing windows, I'd, I'd have one or two tags um, per year, and I was only hunting Utah, financially, time-wise. Last year, I had 22 big game tags in seven different states. So, so for You have a lot of time, basically, is what you're yeah. saying from real estate. Yeah, so basically from the month of August until December, I hunted more days than I worked. That's amazing. Yeah, it's what, pretty awesome. Yeah, no, like no matter what your passion is, just the fact that you could say that I think is inspiring to anyone, right? No matter what their passion is, they could say they did that more than they worked for a six month period. Like that's something worth striving for. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. It really is. To finish us off, Zach, I know you coach people on driving for dollars. You've mentioned your challenge where you went to Florida and you had no contacts at all. And was it 30 days or 40 days? It was a 40 day challenge. I only got 30 days cause my, my family got sick, but, um, but yeah, I, I did it and I got, I got 10 days. One of the deals I did was in that 10 day stretch that it was a lead that came in that I worked, which was a big one. It was a $50,000 deal. And I did it while I was in Brazil with my family. Um, just did it virtually. Is your, but. Is your deal a beaver? Cause damn. <laughs> $50,000. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, David. <laughs> That's crazy. So he said, he said before this podcast, he said, I'm gonna I'm gonna use this joke. Pretend like you're surprised. <laughs> but I totally forgot though. So where do you actually where do you actually go to see this challenge? Because people need to see this challenge if they haven't already. Yep. So you can go to um, my YouTube channel. So uh, I think it's called Real Estate Investing with Zach Booth. You can just go to YouTube and search Zach Booth. Maybe you'll find my window cleaning tutorial videos too, maybe. Um, but uh, definitely find my real, my real estate channel and um, just go to playlists. And then in playlists, there's the, there's the 40 day challenge. So you can watch it for free. Amazing. Uh, Zach, well, what's something that you can leave us with, right? As somebody that teaches people how to start this whole feeling business from scratch, knowing there's somebody listening who's looking for their first deal. Like what, what do you feel like they need to hear right now? Um, well, I've coached hundreds of people now and to, to successfully get their first deal. And I've coached hundreds more that have given up, right? They haven't taken action. They haven't done the work. And um, I've spent hours and hours and sleepless nights trying to figure out like, what's the main factor that keeps people from succeeding or not succeeding, essentially failing, right? Giving up. 
you know, giving up on their dream. And I realized that it was 99.9% .9 of the time it's because they didn't believe that it was possible. They didn't believe it was possible for a handful of reasons. There's too many obstacles in their way. Their spouse didn't support them. They weren't smart enough. They weren't, they didn't have the work ethic, the discipline, whatever it might be, right? Whatever that story was, they told themselves. And I remember thinking about it. I was like, how do I fix that? Right? How do I change that in someone? How do I give the gift of belief, the gift of hope, the gift of confidence that they needed to stay the course, right? To keep pushing through um, till they got that call, till they felt that rush, till they cashed that check, you know? And I was up late one night and I was like, how do, what changed it for me? Like what gave me permission? Cause I was major skeptical, all these gurus. I was like, oh, they're just selling courses. They don't make money. You know what I mean? And, and, but what changed it? What made me believe? Well, what made me believe is I had it happen. I saw it happen. I saw people making money. It's like, this stuff's real. So that 40 day challenge is that gift, that gift that I feel like God gave me of having Stan Nielsen in my life and seeing a deal of a lifetime fall in my lap and seeing that I didn't take advantage of the guy. He helped me. He educated me on how to do it. Like he did way more than me. He sell or find it like, like a deal of a lifetime and an incredible man that wanted to see me succeed, gave me an opportunity. And I wanted to show people that it was real because just seeing like the money was cool, right? Like it was cool. But, but what actually meant more was it was proof of concept. Like it can be done. It can be done again. So I wanted, I wanted to give that gift to other people that if they could see it happen, that they could see that who I was and see me actually doing it day by day, they'd be like, man, Zach's, Zach's a goober. Like if that guy can do it, you know, like, like cause really like it's, it really, like, I show that in the videos. Like, you see the mistakes I make. I make some super silly mistakes. Sometimes I don't know how to deal with certain situations. Like, you see that, like, yeah, I might have a lot of experience compared to you guys, but you can still see that it was not so outside of the possibilities for you guys to be successful. So my hope is you guys understand what that content is. That content is to give you hope and belief and faith. And, and I, I really, really encourage you guys, if you're, if you're at all serious about getting into this space and doing wholesaling or, or if you've done one deal and you're stuck and you're trying to find more, um, I would suggest going and watching that. That's what I really want to say. I just really want to encourage people to go watch that challenge. Oh yeah. It's the worst when somebody gives up and you know that they were that close, right? We've all uh, seen that meme where you're like, you're about to give up and they're two inches from mining gold, but they give up and they never see it. Oh, it's so hard as a coach too, man. Like you see these people and I mean, you see the opposite though. Like you see, you know, people that are just struggling so hard and, um, see them change their lives and have, have what, what I have now, you know, and like what it means to them and the freedoms that they have and the time they have for their kids. And it's like, man, like that's, that's why I coach. It's why I teach, you know, is I get my cake and eat it too. Every day, you know, I have my money, but, but now I have my fulfillment too. I have a purpose. I have something that makes me go, yep, my life was worth living, you know? Well, let's put a pun in the uh, pin in this one, Zach, it's been a pleasure to have you on. Thanks for taking some time to help people who are wanting to quit their job and who are wanting to start a business and are looking for that first wholesale deal. And I know they're going to get a lot out of that 40 day challenge on your YouTube channel. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Thank you guys. It's a See pleasure. You. Thanks for listening to the Deal Machine Real Estate Investing Podcast. Please leave us a review and follow along wherever you're listening to your podcast.